All right, guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a look at Dave Canterbury's 10 C's plus five for his survival kit. Stick around. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, I got my Bird Getter 3000 right here, and I'm out doing some bird hunting and doing a little bit of recon for deer hunting later on this evening. And what I thought I'd do today is show you guys the original 10 C's of survival as coined by Dave Canterbury. If you guys hear crunch and I've got some farm cats that have followed me. Hey, crazy, get off my tripod. But anyway, what I'm gonna do today is show you plus five. Now a while ago, Dave Canterbury, when he was coming up with the 10 C's, coined the 10 C's and then showed those. And then somewhere throughout, he coined 15 C's. I'm gonna show you guys the five C's, or the additional five C's that were recommended by Dave Canterbury. So, I mean, sure, we got an empty chamber, I'm good to go. Put that, put that around in my pocket. Now, I got my bag with me, guys, for the, for the 10 C's plus five that I'm gonna show you. All right, guys, I got my salt pack right here, ready to go. And inside, as I open this up, I have my dry bag with my 10 C's of survival in it. The first time I learned about the 10 C's, this was the way that Dave Canterbury was transporting the 10 C's as an emergency survival kit. Now the 10 C's obviously being a helpful mnemonic to remember 10 key items to have in any survival situation, the first five being the highest priority and the hardest to recreate in the wild. Why don't we open the sea line bag up and take a look at the 10 C's, stand by. I have my first five C's laid out here for you guys and the first five C's are gonna be those hardest ones to recreate in the wild, which is why they're at the top of the list for the first five. We have a cutting device, combustion device, cordage, container, and then a cover element for those first five C's. Now, let's start with the cutting element. Here I have the original PSK-1 purchased many, many moons ago. And you guys can see there's a lot of wear and tear just on the sheath alone, but uh, the sheath, Kydex, leather, uh, leather belt loop on the back, loop for my ferro rod. And then in the back, the original design was to allow for a spearhead to fit in the back of the sheath, roughly like this. That way, the survivalist could pull out a spear, make a spear uh, readily with a spear tip. And so I've got my spear hidden back there in my sheath. And then, as I pull out the knife, here's the knife, PSK-1, Scandi grind, 3 8 inch, spine on the back the width of the blade is approximately an inch and a half and then the overall cutting surface as you guys can see is about five and a half inches or so and it is a full tang knife going all the way down to the taper and lanyard giving that that good handle with the micarta handle and this thing is meant to take abuse And you guys can see that this knife, even though I've sharpened it up, cleaned it up a little bit, has taken a lot of abuse from me out in the field. And I've had this knife for a long time. And so this is the knife I've been using. I've since progressed and I like to use the Mora Garberg as a survival knife or at least an everyday carry knife, full tank knife when I'm out in the field now. It does all the same things. It may not be as big to baton larger pieces of wood and it may not be as thick to take a bigger beating as the PSK-1, but my skills have since improved. I feel confident with the Mora Garberg as opposed to the PSK-1, but I can accomplish the same task with this, having a greater set of skills and techniques acquired in the field over the last few years or so compared to somebody who may have this knife then can't do some of the finer work. But the PSK-1 has served me very well. All right, that's the PSK-1 knife with the Kydex sheath and then the spear you saw in there. So that's our cutting tool. Our combustion device is gonna be that old faithful six inch by half inch ferrosium rod with the tape up here at the head and a small lanyard to give me a better grip when I strike sparks. And you can see, obviously, this is a wonderful tool 
and component for a combustion device, very simple, reliable, knowing how to get tinder from the surroundings and then using this to ignite it. The cordage that Dave Canterbury recommends is bank line. I think we've all used bank line now. It's everywhere, just like 550 cord. Binds well, lashes well. You can use it to make gill nets. You can use it to repair clothing, break it down, use it for traps. It's the cordage that Dave Canterbury recommends as part of the Emergency 10C Survival Kit. Next we have our container. For the container, he recommends a stainless steel bottle and nesting cup. Here I have the 32 ounce stainless steel bottle with a 25, 26 ounce uh, stainless steel nesting cup where I have almost 60 ounces of water together to boil and purify for consumption. I can also boil in the bottle, cook in the cup if I happen to procure food. That way I'm accomplishing two tasks at the same time, cooking and making water safe to drink. That's going to be Dave Canterbury's recommendation for a container, the fourth C. All right, so Dave Canterbury recommends in his emergency 10C survival kit a thermal blanket, a heavy duty one, as opposed to one of those smaller Mylar blankets that you guys have seen me use in the past. On top of this, he also recommends having two 55 gallon drum liners. These drum liners are three mil and they can be used as emergency ponchos, gathering uh, materials for fire. You can do a lot with drum liners and having two of them part of the kit with this thermal blanket to create that shelter. You take the drum liners, put them inside the blanket and roll it up and put it in your kit. So those are the first five items, guys. Now that takes us into the final five C's of survival as per Dave Canterbury's kit. The sixth C is going to be that compass. This is the MC2, uh, Sunto MC2 compass and I put illumination tape over top of the cover to find it in the event I drop it at night. I can see that illumination tape or if I need to write down something with a map marker I can write it down on the compass briefly. This also has pace beads on it. Using, using a crown knot with a 550 cord I created some pace beads just around a length of 550 cord. It's got the sighting mirror in top. Uh, it can also be used as an emergency signal. and then clearly the compass inside with a small magnification lens for improvisational fire starting using uh, the sun's power. So that's our sixth element. Our seventh C is gonna be that cotton material. Any cotton material that is three feet by three feet is what's recommended and what's on the packing list for the Pathfinder School. It's just a shemag that is 100% cotton. So I can take this, use it as an emergency bandage, use it as a cover element, use it to stay warm. I can make char cloth out of this. I can use it as a collection uh, device, just uh, putting debris in it. You guys have seen me do that before. But I can do a lot with a shemag. Eighth item is gonna be cargo tape. Here's just a small roll of Gorilla Tape. What can't you do with duct tape? We've all seen duct tape before. Nothing new, but it is probably the best survival tool or survival item in the world. The ninth item that is recommended in the 10 C's of survival is going to be that headlamp. The headlamp itself needs to do a variety of functions, but it needs to be hands-free. The thing that is crucial to the headlamp is that it has some sort of strobe on it this is an emergency signal. Now I can obviously use white light, red light, it's got a couple other functions on here, but having that strobe, uh, even in red light, as an emergency signal during hours of limited visibility is key to the ninth item, that headlamp. The final item in the 10 C's is going to be a canvas needle. This is just a 14 gauge canvas needle that I can use to repair clothing. I can use it with a D battery and some lead wire to create an improvised uh, compass and use this needle for a variety of purposes. So canvas needle is gonna be our final 10 of our 10 C's. All right guys, so let's talk about the additional five C's totaling 15 C's developed by Dave Canterbury. Now I think the mnemonic 
uh, you know, reached its uh, maximum effective range at 10, and so 15 was probably just a little bit too much. And so I think Dave Canterbury and others took down those additional five Cs. I only demonstrate them here or show you guys those kit items here because I want to keep that kit and kind of those relics of YouTube past alive and show you guys what Dave Canterbury recommended as an additional five C's for emergency survival kit. So let's take a look. So here are the next five C's that Dave Canterbury had recommended before as part of his 10 C's. So this would total 15 items as part of the emergency 10 C survival kit. And I think this was developed by Dave Canterbury as additions to carry with the 10 C's to allow you to do more obviously in the field and then to have a few more items readily available for the purposes of survival and we'll show them here. Now the first item he recommended was having some sort of sack or multi-tool or combination tool. There's the 11th C and this is just this Leatherman Super Tool 300. I've shown this thing many 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 times and tried and true method for having a everyday carry combination tool on you. Uh, you can do so much with this tool as you guys have seen me do in a lot of my videos. The next C, the 12th one, is going to be an additional cutting item. And so that additional cutting item in Dave Canterbury's kit had the Baco Laplander saw. I've since upgraded and I'm now using the Silky brand. This is the Gomboy Silky and just put a little lanyard on here. I've been using this hanging up deer stands and cutting off some limbs. to trees around the area and I'm now a believer in the Silky and have since uh, graduated to the Silky. But that's the 12th item, the additional cutting tool. The 13th item is going to be some sort of sharpening stone and I forget the, the C, I'm sure one of you guys will remember in the, in the comments, but it was just a uh, diamond rod that Dave Canterbury added to the 10 C's emergency survival kit as a way to sharpen your blades in the field. All I have is just a simple DMT diamond rod uh, sharpener with a coarse side and then a finer side. And this is what I carry in the field. This is the 13th item that he recommended, a sharpening stone. The 14th item that he recommended was an additional container. Now the 14th item that Dave Canterbury recommended as an additional five items to the 10 C's emergency survival kit was an additional container. In his video that I don't believe is up anymore, he had an MSR uh, Siegel stowaway pot that he used and you could use that to store some of these other items in and then still fit it inside the sea line bag. What I have here is just another bottle and nesting cup. I'm a huge fan of having at least two bottles and then one or more nesting cups. I can do all the same things with this uh, with this set as I can with my other set. The 15th item that he recommended in his video was a slingshot and this is a way to have a method for improvised food gathering. I've used a slingshot before. A lot of times you guys will see my video on improvised slingshots and they're very uh, capable of taking down game and breaking bottles. But a slingshot was the 15th item that he added in there as a way to have an emergency food procurement item because you can make this very easily with that bank line and then a Y section of a uh, branch that you break down and whittle down to create that slingshot and then lash everything together. And then there are usually rocks everywhere that you can pick up and have readily available as ammunition to take down game while you hunt for small game. And that is the final five C's of the 10 C's emergency survival kit plus five as per Dave Canterbury. Right now to pack all this up, got my sea line bag. I'm gonna start with my container. As is the first item to go in there. I'm gonna take my shelter or cover elements with the 55 gallon drum liners inside and just roll that up inside my cover element, that thermal blanket. Show that right inside. Grab my cot material, my schmog, put it inside. Cordage all the way down. Grab my ferro rod, slide that inside. Take my cargo tape on top, my candling device, or my flashlight right on top. 
my compass, throw it right on top. And then with my knife, I can either wear this or stow it in my bag. I'm gonna stow it in the bag today and put it right down side. All I have to do now is squeeze the air out, pull up, make sure I got a tight seal, roll my seal line bag down, clip it, and then I have my 10 piece emergency survival kit, the 10 C's of survival, inside my sea line bag, just the way that it was introduced to me. I got my salt bag, I got my 10 piece kit, that's right inside. All right, now for the additional 15 items, number 11, can be that combination tool, my Leatherman Super Tool 300, throw it inside. My uh, number 12 is additional cutting item, that silky saw. I'm gonna put it inside. 13 is that diamond rod or my sharpening stone right here for knife repair in the field. 14th item is gonna be that additional container. Put it right inside. And then that 15th item is going to be that slingshot band. And I'll throw that inside as well. Zip everything up. And now I'm ready to go. Alright guys, if you like that video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment in the comments section, alright? I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me and for the channel. I want to thank you guys for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video just as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.